Today, we are talking about one of the hottest names in Calgary, and that would be Igor Sharangovich. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today, we are joined by my partner in crime, Nick Zararis. Nick, how are you doing? I'm a little cold, but I'm hanging in there. Yeah, it, it's it's a little chilly today. Uh, today, is, speaking of chilly, you're going to want to warm up with some great bets on Sleeper. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. I mentioned it uh, just a few seconds ago, but we are going to be talking all about uh, Sharky, uh, better known as Igor Sharangovich, who has been an absolute force to be reckoned with, um, and has come miles <laughs> in the seven months since being acquired from New Jersey in the Tyler Toffoli trade. But before we dive into all that, make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Flames, wherever you get your favorite podcasts, and of course on YouTube as well. We're here for you five days a week with all the latest news out of the Calgary Flames organization. We were talking a little bit before the show about this 25-year-old. Yes. He looks like a child still. Yes. (laughs) But is this what you thought you were getting? Before the season, we said they needed to find a way to add about 45 goals to the team because you, you're mm-hmm. subtracting to Foley's 34 from last year. And then they were, I want to say, 18th or 19th in goals last year. And if you wanted to get into that upper half of the league to safely be amongst the playoff teams, they were going to need to find another 15 to 20 or so. And I figured you could count for Sharon Govich for something between 15 and 20. Based on his usage, based on the opportunities, and we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to the profile, but as far as what he is, he doesn't have a long track record. Like for somebody who's 25 and they'll be 26 before the end of the calendar year, you would think he'd be a little bit more established. And part of that is just the way the world was for like the whole COVID three years. And yeah. it's not entirely his fault. He's not the only player that really got the short end of the stick and stick and missed on key developmental time, but drafted as a overager, he was 19 One year, his draft year in the KHL, his only professional year in the KHL. Before that, he played in the KHL equivalent of junior. The the CHL in Canada, they have an equivalent to that in Russia. One season of that, played in the KHL, drafted, came over to America 2018, two years in the AHL, then went back to Russia during the end of COVID, The excuse me, during that pause where there was no hockey at the end of the season that ended in like October when the lightning won the cup the first time he went back over to Russia. He played over there. Then he came out back to the States played at the NHL level for the first time in 2020 and got a lot of run with New Jersey. Frankly, I was very, I, I'm, this is somebody I'm pretty aware of. I do consume a decent amount of devil's hockey being in the New York tri-state area, but very, a lot of usage for somebody who didn't have a, a big, track record you know I, I in my notes i compared what the devils did to lord of the flies where they just drafted a bunch of wings and said one of you has got to be good eventually you know they took brat pavel zaka um jesper boquist sharon govich dawson mercer they took a lot of forwards over that period of time where they were trying to restock their cupboard and set up the core of their team and sharon govich that first year if i if i wrote it down here he was the third most used forward on the team in that rookie season in 2020 wow. 2021 granted there were the devils that year injuries a lot of not not a particularly deep team so it made sense that they would be willing to give a young guy a lot of run the only people who played more than him on that team that year were Heischer and uh, Jack Hughes and then the year after fourth most used so even though they they got a little bit deeper the following season and you saw glimmers of maybe the devils being good in that 2021-2022 season this is somebody who still they were using a lot and then last year happens 
he falls out of favor in New Jersey. Just he he lo- he lost his spot. You know, they brought in Andre Palat, who also plays that side. Dawson Mercer potted 30 goals last year as a 22 year old, which that's going to push you down the pecking order. Yes, Rat was close to a point per game player. And Alexander Holtz was a first round pick. So they're going to defer to the guy they took in the first round over the fifth right. round. So it makes sense that Sharon Govich lost a spot in New Jersey. And in a vacuum, you can understand the idea here for Calgary. They saw that New Jersey, who has had a good track record of drafting European forwards, developing them pretty well, and getting them to hit once they play at the NHL level, I understand that idea. You know, you saw a lot of teams doing this, taking all the Tampa prospects for all those years mm-hmm. where you end up with a Brett Howden, you end up with um, a Darren Radish, you end up with any number of the guys from that Tampa system over a number of years where, I mean, multiple teams took flyers on Tony D'Angelo because the Lightning drafted him with the press, the understanding of Tampa drafts really well. If they saw something, there has to be something here. Yeah. So based on that logic, I understand why the Flames did this. And we talked about it before the season, the idea that this is somebody who played 16 minutes a game for two years and then got dropped down to 14 minutes a game. And now he's back up over that threshold. He's playing comp a, a lot more minutes and he's gotten a little bit of a shooting bender, which helps, but he has had a a good two, three weeks. You know, he had the hat trick last week. He scored the mm-hmm. game winning goal last night. So I think I don't know what to make of him. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more coming up, but it's, it's very curious that we're talking about somebody who's got over 200 NHL games, who's 25 years old. And I still don't really know what he is. Yeah. And like you said before, that's not his fault. Uh, there are just players that unfortunately, kind of didn't have that uh, little pause in their development right after the draft or even a year after the draft, thanks to the pandemic. But it's been nice watching him. I know that he has bounced around a bit in the lineup. I remember uh, closer to the start of the season, he was up on the top line and then had like two or three questionable games and then was immediately put on the fourth line. But I'm happily surprised, I guess, that he has really had success on that top line. It quite literally taking Tyler to fully spot. Yeah, that's I don't think they were looking at this as a direct one to one of we're going to replace to fully with Sharon Govich, mm-hmm. you know, the money ball joke. We can't replace Giambi, but we can recreate him in the aggregate. And that's what they were going to attempt to do. It was going to be Coronado, Pelletier and Sharon Govich. We're going to make up the goal differential that they needed. And across three guys, it's a little more realistic to say, hey, these three guys who weren't on the team last year can combine for 45 goals. You average that out to about 15 for each guy. That's a lot more doable than trying to find one 30 goal guy so i understand the vision i understand the idea but we're going to talk about it in a minute i don't know exactly what what would make sense for him on a good team because that's something we're going to talk about a lot in the third segment where we talk about sharon govich's future with the flames it's just he's never really been on a good team so it's hard to determine what his role would be on a good team because a lot of the statistical models and we'll talk about this more when we talk about his profile they they have him as a third liner on a good most statistical models have him somewhere around a third line forward it's good you need third line forwards it's good when you have players who can do a little bit more than the bare minimum on your third line but the amount of money you're probably going to end up having to pay Sharon Govich entering yeah. unrestricted free agency a year from now, that makes it a little bit more challenging to keep somebody who has holes in their game as we're about to discuss. Yes. And before we dive into all of the nitty gritty, we are going to take a quick break here and we will be back right after a word from Sleeper. It is the halfway point in the season, Flames fans, and we have been through it all Once again, but regardless of where they are in the standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked on NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick Whether studs like McDavid, Dreisaitl, McKinnon, 
Macar will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times your bet, you will need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Flames fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can win big. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you will get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us today on Locked on Flames. Make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an episode here at Locked on Flames. The profile. Who is he? Is he him? He's not him. I mean, there are very, there are very few people... There are very few people in the National Hockey League I am willing to to refer to as, as him. Sharon Govich is an imperfect player in the sense that he's very inefficient. It's not that you can't be effective while being an inefficient player, but that's what we that gets back to what I was talking about before the idea of he's never really been on a good team, so you can't really gauge what he what role he would serve. Because when you go under the hood and you look at the zone entries, you look at the chances created, he's pretty much only shooting himself. He's not setting other people up. He's not particularly engaged on the four check. He doesn't carry the puck into the offensive zone that much. He doesn't dump the puck in and go and get it. This is pretty much a shoot. This is a shoot first guy who isn't a particularly dynamic skater and doesn't have a great shot. He has an okay shot. Somebody who shoots upwards of 13, 14%. That's a little bit above average. The league average right now in today's game is about 10%. So a slightly above average shooter has to shoot a lot because he doesn't get to particularly dangerous areas because he doesn't skate that well. But you you also don't want to shoehorn him into that box yet because – he hasn't really had he had it's hard to say this is what a player is definitively especially when they're only at that 200 games threshold something i failed to mention um in the first segment when we were talking a, bit, a little bit about the pedigree about 20 30 percent of fifth round picks will play one nhl game one. only about five percent of fifth round picks will play more than 200 nhl games to play more than 200 nhl games as a fifth round pick is an accomplishment that is something that this guy he's an nhl regular the issue is a lot of teams will have guys like this in their lineup who aren't perfect to have holes in their game but they'll see that finishing talent and they'll they'll try to put them in their top six the flames mm-hmm. are getting okay production sharon govich probably gonna end up finishing with something between 20 and 25 goals which for somebody which for a player they weren't going to be able to keep to begin with into foley and a second round pick okay that's not a terrible return that's that's workable that's something that you can build with as far as what As far as the frustrations, when you have a guy like this who is inefficient, it becomes really hard to put him with good line mates. And because Mm -hmm. you don't, when all he's going to do is shoot the puck when he's in the zone, the play dies with him. So you have to have somebody with him that's going to be able to facilitate. And you have to have somebody with him that's going to be able to go and get the loose pucks because he's not great at forechecking and he's not great at passing. So you need you're to get better play out of him, to get him to play more efficiently, to be a better overall team player. You're going to need very specific line mates. And then we get to the point of, is it worth it trying to tailor a line to a guy who's at best going to score 25 goals because we're doing everything we can to facilitate him playing better? Right. And you have to, You really have to think about how many players like that are on the flames. And, you know, this, we've talked about it before, but they do have that redundant set of skills. It is pretty much the same thing multiple times throughout their lineups and not in like the elite way that you would like to see, but in a average, maybe slightly below average type of way, it gets you by, but it, it's not enough. No, it's not. 
it'd be one thing if Sharon Govich was a really good shooter and he shot right. a lot. Like, you know, like if he was in the that upper tier, if he was a Jake Gensel, if he was um I'm trying to think of just pure shooting guys. If he was a Vander Kane three years ago, you know, if those types of all they're gonna do is shoot. They're not carrying the puck, they're not playing defense. That's that's a real hole in Sharon Govich's game, is just he doesn't provide you anything defensively. And a lot of the underlying numbers would suggest that he is trading what defense is possible to create offense and they're still going to get out chanced and out expected goals and out high dangered when he's on the ice, which further fuels the idea that this is somebody who is an inefficient hockey player because he can really only do one or two things. Well, and I understand that you're going to have to have diverse skill sets. And if you had another, if you could play Sharon Govich on your third line as a good team, you're probably a pretty good team. But if he's mm-hmm. on your second line, you're probably a little shallow up front. And that's really the conundrum the Flames have is they have a lot of guys who would be really good on a second line on a good team. Like if. Oh, if I it, home? Yeah. Elias Lindholm as a 2C on a really good team. Yeah, that that'll play. You know, or if you do what they did two years ago where you play him with a superstar in his wing, you can get by with him as your number one center on a good team. You know, you talk about Kadri. He did it. He was a second line center on a cup winning team. Blake Coleman was a third liner on Tampa Bay, but is has been good enough his whole career to be a second liner. Same thing with Backland. I would argue when Manjapani has been right, he is a second liner. Mm-hmm. So that's really the issue here. The Flames do not have that upper echelon player that's going to be able to bring more out of their guys. They have a lot of guys who are all decent. Like Sharon Govich is a useful player. He's not, a, he's not bad. He is not outright bad. He has holes in his game. There are probably ways to get better production out of him that don't result in such bad defensive results against, but looking at the underlying stuff, he doesn't set people up. He doesn't get to high danger areas. He really only is shooting. That's really his pl- his best trait. And he is an above average shooter. But if the play is going to stop with him anytime he enters the zone, that's going to limit your ability as a team. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I feel like it doesn't make him selfish. Like some no. people might say that and be it's like. It's what he's best at. Like why would, why would you put yourself in a position to – if you stink at passing and you stink at skating and you stink defensively, why would you re- revert to that and not automatically do what you are good at? I don't like it feels like it's counterproductive, but I completely agree with you in terms of it, it the play dies on his stick and that you don't want that. And any line, but especially your top line. Oh, and I'll get this in real quick under the wire. And you don't know what he's going to be, what he could have been because he spent those three years on a really bad, uh, two years on a really bad Devils team where they were just kind of left to their own devices. Like, you know, like the Devils knew they weren't going to be competitive. So they just threw all the young guys in the deep end and said, some of you are going to have to be good because we've drafted all of you over these years. And yeah, they did. They got Jesper Brad, who's a point per game player. They turned a lot of assets into other stuff, whether it be to Foley or um, not Thomas hurdle. Um, I'm drawing Timo Meyer. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the Devils pushed chips in. They drafted pretty well. But you'll never know what the the high the highest end outcome for Sharon Govich could have been because he wasn't really put in a great environment to play. Mm-hmm. And I'm not gonna say, hey, you need to cater to the fifth round pick that <laughs> has been in your organization for like two years. But when you're put in a situation where it's sink or swim, you know, you're just gonna be left to your own devices and you're not gonna develop good habits. You're gonna develop bad habits. You're gonna find what works for you. And to stay at the NHL level for Sharon Govich, that has just been shooting a ton. So yep. he's gonna keep doing that. That's what he knows. That's what he knows he's good at. Yep. So uh, stick to what you're good at and you might find some success. But coming up, we will wrap up the show with talks about Igor's future because uh, Lord knows they're going to need some sort of direction. And is he part of this club's future? But we are going to take a quick break here and talk about eBay Motors. 
Passion, drive, and patience, that's what brings home the winning trophy, and that's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts to choose from, uh, for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Thanks everyone for tuning in to today's episode of Locked on Flames. Make sure you're leaving a five-star rating and a nice little review on iTunes uh, when you have a chance. That's very much appreciated. What would you give Igor as uh, an iTunes rating right now so far this season? Like a three. He hasn't been terrible. He hasn't been incredible, but he hasn't been bad either. He's been kind of what I expected. You give a, you give a decently talented NHL player more ice time, you're going to get more counting stats, which they've gotten. He, he was capable of this. I want to say he scored 20 goals two years ago. Yeah, he had 24 goals two years ago. So it's not like this is impossible. Right now he's at 18 through 44 games. He'll probably finish something between 25 and 30 if I had to guess. That's a pretty solid season for somebody who, you know, only has three years of NHL experience prior to this year and hadn't really gotten close to 30 since. Uh, granted, he fell out of favor in New Jersey. Better players came along, lost power play opportunities. So, yeah, you if you give an inefficient player – higher usage the counting stats will come this is a big conversation a lot in basketball circles like i jokingly wrote down in my notes the bill simmons the classic bill simmons joke is this a good guy bad team type player <laughs> where uh, can you be the best player on a good team like uh, the, the conversation always is in basketball because you have one star player can do a lot on a bad team and get them to the playoffs in hot in basketball versus in hockey where one guy can only do so much but right. the idea is true what if you put Sharon Govich on a good team, if you put him on the Avalanche, the Stars, the Canucks, the Rangers, the Bruins, the Panthers, he's probably a third liner. You ideally want that third line to be your in-house guys because those are going to be your cheapest guys. Typically speaking, we see teams have the best lineups, the deepest lineups, when they are able to incorporate developmental guys, their own in-house pieces to fill out that bottom six, because that's typically where you're going to get the least return on value. It is really difficult for teams to get excess value. So let's say we're talking about this from a, just a conceptual perspective, a player is getting paid $5 million a year to play 15 minutes a game, etc. That's your baseline to get excess value. That would mean you need to get production more than $5 million. To root out what $5 million is worth in the NHL, it varies year to year because a goal isn't always doesn't cost the same every year because some years it's easier to score than others. But generally speaking, to get excess value, you're going to need to do one of two things. Number one, you're going to need to shoot above your expected goals, meaning you're a plus shooter. Sharon Govich is doing that. He definitely shoots above his expected goals. He is a plus shooter, as we've established. That 13% number is above average. That's a good number for somebody who doesn't have a great shot. Granted, he shoots a lot, but he does get them to go in. So it, there's a trade-off there. Teams run into trouble when they give their bottom six guys a lot of money because those are typically guys who aren't going to age as well. And that we can put that aside for Sharon Govich because he's only 26. But generally speaking, this type of player is the one who, after their team wins the Stanley Cup, they go and cash out. You think about Blake Coleman. You think yeah. about Barkley Goodrow, Yanni Gord. Um, I'm trying to, uh, Ross Colton, That's literally the third line, Ross Colton, Miles Wood, you know, guys who are depth players on other teams, they go get paid somewhere else. And then that's their one opportunity to get paid really. So you don't begrudge them for trying to get as much money as they possibly can. But when you're building a team, it's hard to build a good roster when you're going to tie up five and a half, $6 million in somebody who's going to score 15 to 20 goals 
not be good at killing penalties, not be uh, not win faceoffs. You know, when we're talking mm-hmm. about five, six million dollars a year, you want that to be worth a little bit more than 15 to 20 goals, but nothing else, because you can manufacture more offense if you do the aggregate approach. And what what does that look like for the Flames, though? Because they this, have this is the issue. No money. <laughs> they have no money. They don't have any established stars. No. They don't have a real direction other than we're going to open a new arena in two years. Yeah, that sounds right. What, like, I, I know the reports the last week have been, well, they're not going to trade Markstrom because they still feel like they're in it, even though, you know, there's three teams ahead of them and they're, they haven't shown any ability to win three, four games in a row this year. Like if they had had a bad string of goalie luck or shooting luck, you would say, okay, I understand wanting to be patient. Kind of like what the wild are doing where yeah. they still think they're competitive, even though I disagree. If I were the wild, I would have tried to retool the roster, but I would have started to try and change my roster up a little bit to create some flexibility going forward. Mm-hmm. Same thing here with the flames. Yeah, they're not technically out of it. They haven't played horrible hockey. They haven't played great hockey either. To go on the type of run the Flames are talking about to still be in the mix, you need to have somebody who's capable of carrying a crazy load. Markstrom has played really well this year. Really, really well this year. He's also gotten injured twice. He is also over 30 as a goalie. If they want to try and ride Markstrom into a playoff spot, your margin for error is going to be that small. It is going to be infinitesimal if you're trying to win every single game two to one or three to two for the next two and a half months. They're at 42 games. They got 40 to go. To make the playoffs, they're probably going to need to get something in the neighborhood of 700 percentage points. So they're going to need to get something between, of the 40 games left, 80 possible points, something in the neighborhood of, 55 to 60 to be in the conversation. Oh, good. The math is difficult. The math is really difficult. I just also realized, um, haven't, I guess, wouldn't they think back to when he started 63 games and then the following year was, um, plus playoffs. 63 Broken. plus yeah, right. two playoff series. Yeah. And he was just absolutely destroyed last year. And if you are trying to get better, why would you do that to your goaltender when, I mean, it's not really a pattern, but based on past experiences, it is likely that he falls flat on his face again. So what are you going to do? Have Dustin Wolf doing this entire thing and then burn him out by 26? It's a real challenge. I just to tie a bow on Sharon Govich for this episode because well we we can, we can take plenty of time to try and read the tea leaves and I'm sure we'll put on our fortune teller hats later in the week to discuss the news as it's trickled out of Calgary. But just to tie a bow on Sharon Govich, useful player, not an efficient player. To get better results, they're gonna need to tailor a line to him but it's probably not worth it to try and feature somebody with this skill set because he's if you're going to pay him what he's going to want which market rate is probably something in the neighborhood of 5 and a half million and a little about a million and a half raise from what he's getting right now and based on the fact the cap's going to go up 5 to 10 million dollars next summer mm-hmm. It's probably not worth it for the Flames, but based on the way the Flames have operated over the last couple of seasons, they're probably going to end up giving it to him anyway. Blank check. Not a blank check, but they're going to give him his market rate. Oh, well, maybe things will be different because it's a different general manager. But You can hope. I- that's really all you can do as a Flames fan. So, I, you know, anyone that's been doing this their whole life, I give you a lot of credit. But that will do it for today's episode of Locked on Flames. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and making us part of your day. Uh, make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. I would love to hear from you in the comments and what you think the realistic uh, contract could look like for Sharon Govich. So until tomorrow, stay safe, stay warm, stay hydrated. 
Uh, don't go outside unless you absolutely have to. And Nick, do you have any final words for us today? I'm going to go eat some dinner and watch hockey. Heck yeah.